Between 1914 and 1918, the world was engulfed in a terrible war, with conflicts occurring practically everywhere. That war ended, but left many issues unsolved and sparked many revolutions and uprisings. Just 20 years later, another war, even bloodier than the previous one, once again spread throughout the globe. These are what we now call World War I and World War II, the first global conflicts on the planet. Or were they? Few people today know that these were not the first world wars of humanity. Over 150 years before World War I, there was another conflict that involved France, Austria, Russia, Sweden, Spain, Britain, Prussia, Portugal and many others. North America, India, the Caribbean, the Philippines and large parts of Europe were affected by this war. It's now called the Seven Years' War and many historians consider it to be the first true global conflict. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. The Seven Years' War was fought between 1756 and 1763 and, just like our world wars, it was ignited by unsolved issues left by previous conflicts. Those issues were inherited from the War of the Austrian Succession, during which King Frederick II of Prussia seized the rich province of Silesia from Austria. That war was an attempt from France and Prussia to stop Maria Theresa of Austria becoming the Holy Roman Empress. She won that war, but Austria was left weak and vulnerable. At the same time, Prussia was gaining more and more power, thanks mostly to its King Frederick, and began struggling for power with Austria. To make matters worse, France and Great Britain were already in conflict over colonial possessions in North America. The scene was set for the global conflict that would last seven years. In 1756, the Prussian king signed a treaty with Great Britain to protect one of its provinces, Hanover. This strong and scary alliance prompted Maria Theresa to begin a so-called diplomatic revolution. She allied herself with her former enemy, France, and got very close to the Russian Empire. Former friends were now enemies. Realizing that a war was now imminent, Frederick preemptively attacked Saxony and quickly overran it. The result was an uproar across Europe. Austria and France were now at war with Prussia. Most states of the Holy Roman Empire followed suit. Sweden, who also opposed Prussia and wanted to regain Pomerania, also joined the war. Later in the war, Spain, bound by alliance, intervened on France's behalf and attempted to invade Portugal. Russia also joined Austria, only to switch sides when Tsar Peter III succeeded to the throne in 1762. On the other side, Prussia was fighting alongside Great Britain, Ireland, British America, Hanover, the Portuguese Empire and several German states. It was a complete mess, a war that once started couldn't be stopped through any diplomatic solutions. Since this war involved the greatest colonial powers of the time, who were already harassing each other in their colonies, this war quickly spread across the world. France and Britain both wanted control over the Ohio River Valley and this was the perfect opportunity to settle this issue. In India, the Nawab of Bengal, an ally of France, attacked Calcutta and imprisoned 145 British soldiers. This, of course, was overblown by propaganda and a full-on war began in the Indian subcontinent too. The British defeated Bengal one year later while also defeating French forces in the area. Back in Europe, despite being surrounded by hostile nations, Prussia, with the help of Britain, managed to achieve several victories against the French, the Austrians and the Russians. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you something. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here or find the link in the description. Okay, now we can move on to the next fact. 
1759 was the year of victories for the Anglo-German alliance. Initially, in North America, France won several battles, but in 1759 it lost several key forts and cities, including Quebec, the capital of French-American territories. That same year, in Europe, the French suffered a great defeat in Hanover, while their navy was decimated along the coast of Bretagne. Things were not going great for the Austro-French alliance. Despite the odds, it was becoming clear that they were beginning to lose the war. By 1760, Montreal was lost by the French. So was Pondicherry in India. But Prussia wasn't doing so great either. With few men left, Berlin itself under siege, and the survival of Prussia and its king under threat, a total collapse was imminent. However, in 1762, the Russian Empress Elizabeth died, and her successor, Peter III, was a Prussophile and switched sides. With the Russian occupation over, Frederick was able to concentrate on Austria and sign a truce with Sweden. Now, Spain and Portugal were also fully involved, but all sides were exhausted and started seeking a way out. This huge conflict ended in 1763 with the Treaty of Paris. The aftermath was unimaginable just a few years before. Great Britain gained all French possessions in North America, all French ports and colonies in India, and large parts of the Caribbean. Spain gave up Florida, but did receive French territories west of the Mississippi. Prussia and Austria were left broke. Frederick was actually forced to pawn everything of value from his estates, while Maria Theresa did the same with her jewels. The absolute winner of the Seven Years' War was Great Britain. They gained enormous areas of land and influence, effectively ending French supremacy. It was from this moment on that Britain became the giant empire we think of today. The transformation of Britain into a world giant wasn't the only consequence of the war. India's fate was forever changed back then. Britain had no rivals left there and in the next 70 years conquered almost the entire subcontinent. Back in North America, there was growing dissent in the British colonies over taxation. When the American War of Independence finally broke out, France was obviously quick to offer their help. Another consequence of the war was the disappearance of Poland. The country was chopped up between Austria, Prussia and Russia and ceased to exist until 1918. In all, this war left over a million people dead and wounded and millions more displaced. And of course, this wasn't the war to end all wars. Just 40 years later, Europe was once again in arms, in the Napoleonic Wars, but that's a whole other story. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.